What is going on guys? Victor here. Welcome back to another Catch and Cook. Now on the fillet table right here, I got two kingfish, one for me, one for Brooke. We're both doing Catch and Cooks. And uh, this is from a recent offshore trip that we had. And kingfish are a really, really good eating fish, especially when they're fresh. And what I'm gonna do with this guy is, I'm gonna get bold out of my comfort zone. And I have looked up the basic principles of a curry. And that's exactly what I'm gonna try to do is make a banging curry recipe for you guys. So stick around. I knew that technique worked. Cool. That's that pier special. That's what we used to do on the pier. We used to, we used to, it's called snobbling ballyhoo. Oh, yeah. This might be a decent fish. Oh yeah, babe. And I was kind of working it almost like a lure. I would let it drift back and I would kind of give it a twitch twitch. And I think anything from underneath or sideways sees that flashing of that dead ballyhoo and they think it's, I don't know, they might think it's alive, but it definitely entices a bite. Oh yeah. Gaff worthy. Gaff worthy though. Yeah. That was a great gaff shot. See, that gets me excited. Good work, Matt. <laughs> there you go. And you guys couldn't have got a better gaff shot than right there in the head. Perfect. Choked the ballyhoo. There's a lot of kings out today. There is. Mm -hmm. They're not that big, but there's a lot around and they're, they're not, spunky. They're not turned on though. We're not getting them on the jigs like we want to. No. Get them, babe. Get them, babe. Get them, babe. You're on, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. There he goes. There he goes. He woke up. So I just caught one. Now Brooke's on. This was on a live guard. What do we got? Yeah. Whether it's been the planer or the live baits, we're getting tight all day long. Oh yeah. All right guys, so Brooke is hooked up now on the the green rod, on the Conley rod, and that was on a live gog. As I was unhooking my king from the ballyhoo, she just got hooked up. It doesn't feel like it's doing He's definitely butt hooked. Look at how you're bringing him up. Welcome back to the fillet table guys. Now I got two beautiful fresh Florida kingfish to fillet up for you guys. Uh, these are very fun fish to catch offshore. They're aggressive, they got teeth, and they're just a blast to watch uh, these things skyrocket on your bait. So as you guys see, I got this new tool here. My dad got me a fillet knife kit for Christmas. I never really used these tools, I've always been a stone guy, but trying it out. And anytime you uh, fillet a fish or or kingfish in particular, always start by the head because there is head meat that protrudes well into the head. Run your knife along that backbone, flip your fish over, go along the backbone here. And one thing with kingfish is it is a softer uh, fleshed meat fish, so you can just run your knife right along that backbone, especially with smaller fish. And you guys see you miss a tiny bit of meat, but it makes filleting a lot easier. And you guys know me, I love checking the stomach contents of fish, and you guys see that this kingfish has been eating flying fish. Those are the wings of a flying fish, a staple in a kingfish's diet, and most fish offshore. Poke the eyeballs, you gotta make sure you poke the eyeballs, otherwise your fish carcass will float up and you're gonna piss off your neighbors. Now, the hardest thing about flaying a kingfish is skinning it, because their skin is really, really thin, and uh, a lot of times the skin ends up getting sucked to the flesh, you cut through it. So what I like to do, you guys see I missed a little bit of meat right there, but that's because I kind of just glide my knife over the skin rather than uh, you know directly against it. Cutting out the bloodline, cutting out the bones of the, uh, the rib meat, toss it over, feed, it, feed our fish fence. And you guys see I actually mess up on the skinning here because like I said, it is not easy. Sometimes your knife, especially when you're using a really sharp knife, which you should, gets stuck. So I just went ahead and did a little quick fixing up and uh, got rid of that skin right here. And uh, this is the fish that Brooke ate. She took the bigger kingfish, she's got a bigger family than me, filleted up for her, and uh, you guys see that flesh is just falling right off. You just run your knife real easy. All right guys, so today we are going to be making a kingfish curry. Now you guys know me, I like to learn the principles behind things so I can do it and make my own recipes not follow them. So the three things that go into a curry, onion, garlic, ginger, spices, and then thirdly, is gonna be something to give it body, whether it's milk, yogurt, uh, tomato paste, something like that to give it body. Now, I'm not no curry expert, but these are the things that I learned and looked up. So we're starting with our onion, our garlic, and our ginger right here on the cutting board. 
cutting up our onion. I'm just going with one large onion for this recipe. And uh, the whole thing is to uh, cut it up into as small of pieces as possible. So I just diced it as finely as I could. And just giving it another rough chop. And then ginger, I don't wanna do too much ginger, so I went with the smaller half of this whole ginger root right here. But in retrospect, I wish I would've used the whole thing because it was lacking ginger. And I also went with one whole head of garlic for this curry as well. Uh, first things first, we got our oil heating up in a big pan. Get our onions going because they take the longest to cook and I want them to get nice, brown, crisp, and caramelized. Chopping up our ginger, and you guys will see I attempted something that did not work out. I tried to put my ginger through a garlic press. Turns out you can't put ginger through a garlic press, so I just ended up chopping it again into as fine pieces as I possibly could. But the garlic, we did get in the garlic press, and that's what it's meant for. All right, so step two is spices, and this is where you can get as creative as you possibly want. This is where you're gonna control your heat and the color of your curry and all that, so I went ahead and went with coriander, cloves, cumin, turmeric, chili powder, paprika, but like I said, you can put whatever you want in there. You can put some dried chilies in there, and uh, I think I did about a tablespoon of each, putting them into my little glass mixing bowl, give it a uh, nice little stir before I put it into my mixture. I added a little bit more olive oil to my onions, and you see how brown they are? That's what I wanted, and I'm gonna toast my spices. I also added about a quarter cup of water, and our next step is the body. So I'm gonna go ahead, this is gonna be more of a tomato-based curry, and I went and chopped my tomatoes into small pieces as possible, put them in there after my spices got uh, you know, nice and aromatic and toast a little bit, bring it up to a boil, and the whole thing with curry, I think, and from what I researched, is just letting those flavors come together and develop. And I went ahead and went with jasmine rice for the rice of our choice for our dish, just two cups, put it into our water. Now, once my tomatoes have cooked down, I went ahead and added a whole cup of water to this mixture, and I'm gonna bring it back up to a boil, as you guys are going to see here. And as it's boiling, I'm also gonna be preparing my zucchini, which I'm going to toss into my curry at the very end, along with some snow peas, into, you know, nice bite-sized little kind of strips right there. And uh, this is a key step that you guys can, it's, it's optional, but I went ahead and did it and I put my curry mix into a blender because I don't really like a, a really coarse mix. I like a nice smooth paste-like mixture. So I put that into a blender, put it back into my pot, and I went ahead and added some coconut milk, brought it all up to a boil, and now you got a nice silky smooth curry. Now I gotta tell you guys about this stuff called Coco Lopez Cream of Coconut. It is so good, and I added it to the rice to make a coconut uh, rice. Uh, shout out to my boy Chris Lowe, he's the one who introduced me to this stuff, and it's as easy as just adding the can to it, and it is so good. I also added some to the curry as well. And here, towards the end of the curry, I just added the zucchini and snow peas, and just brought it to a nice little simmer. Just let it, you know, s sit there cooking for about 20 minutes. Now moving on to our fish, you guys see the kingfish right there? And this is after three or four days. A lot of people don't like kingfish even on the first day, but we love kingfish, so I think those people are crazy. I'm just doing some finishing touches, you know, getting rid of the bloodline and making it into uh, pieces that I can season up and put into the frying pan. I just went very simple, got the natural taste of the fish. We did some pink Himalayan sea salt, some black pepper, as well as garlic powder, and uh, I do notice all the comments, someone told me to stop using garlic powder and get granulated garlic, I gotta look into that. And I'm cutting up some lime here as well for garnish as well as cilantro to put into our curry right before you serve it. It just brings out the flavor of the curry and it gives it a nice fragrance. Uh, we got some olive oil, some butter going into the pan as well as our fish. Get a nice little brown coating on each side, uh, a little you know crispiness to get, to get in there flip them over, you know, nothing crazy. I really want the uh, curry to really be the sauce for this dish and just to taste the natural flavor of the, the fish. I went a little fancy, put my rice into a little bowl. We got a nice little uh, ball of it and dishing up our fish right there. You guys see, very simple, but very tasty. A little cilantro garnish, lime garnish, and then we're gonna add our beautiful, just full-bodied curry to this, and it just tasted and smelled so damn good, guys. Look at that. 
I, it, it really was a dish that I'm proud of. I really liked it. I've attempted curry in the past and it didn't turn out good, but this one came out very, very good. Something I would have done differently with this recipe in the future was went with a ginger paste, garlic paste, and tomato paste. That way you can avoid that whole blender process. But otherwise, it was really good. Everyone enjoyed it. As you guys see, we're all eating it up. And uh, yeah, so here are what people thought. <laughs> so what did you think of the fish, Anka? That was delicate, really delicate fish. Everything was delicious. Fresh? Good health, good health because not uh, good uh, fat. Enjoy very much, thank you. No problem, thank you for coming. Starka, what do you think? Very good. Very good. Not, no fishing, this is important for me. And I think you're happy that your friend is here today. Yes, I am very happy. Good, good. Yeah. we had a nice family dinner. What about thank you, so? Fish great, the sauce even better. Awesome. <laughs> And Brooke was worried about a curry sauce, so what did you think of your first one? I was worried about a curry sauce. I thought it was going to be really hot, and it wasn't hot at all, which is good because I don't really like hot, and it was really good. We had kingfish last night, then we had kingfish tonight, and I think the fish was better tonight than it was last <laughs> night. So good job, you beat me. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and it was really nice to have my grandma's friend here because my grandma, you know, she doesn't get out much, she doesn't drive, it's basically just our family with her, so she doesn't have a lot of friends over, and it's nice to entertain people and get some feedback on your cooking once in a while. I don't know if you guys noticed at the dinner table, but like, people are just pushing food in your face, kind of like a very Italian-like family. Brooke was eating her fish while they were trying to serve her cake, and then Anka, my grandma's friend, was trying to serve her pie. <laughs> so that's a very Slovakian thing. It's very. Always at Victor's house. We eat dinner, and as soon as we're done with dinner, desserts right there. <laughs> yeah, always. This recipe, along with all recipes going forward, will be posted on my website. I have been updating my website, so there will be a, a section on LandsharkNation.com. So if you guys want the, you know, the measurements and a more in-depth you know, analysis on the recipe itself, some pictures. I'm gonna put that up there, share it with your friends, your family, you know. I guess that sums up this video. Brooke and I are gonna get back to drinking our coffee and we'll be seeing all you guys, well, I guess you're our land sharks now, our land sharks in that next video. Girl, you feel the